Hello students. Today we are going to look at an interesting topic in history. Let us begin. Do you recognize this great personality? Yes, you are right. This is Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, the founder of Hindavi Swaraj in Maharashtra. But before Shivaji Maharaj, Maharashtra was very different. Let us have a look at Maharashtra before the times of Shivaji Maharaj. This is a map of India and we have Maharashtra to the west. Maharashtra at the beginning of the 17th century common era was mostly under the Nizam Shah of Ahmadnagar and the Adil Shah of Bijapur. Similarly, the area of Khandesh which you see here in blue was ruled over by the Mughals. The Mughals came from North India. This is the Konkan coast. Even Vasai comes in the Konkan coast. The Konkan coast was ruled over by the Siddhis who had come from Africa. The British, the Portuguese, the French and the Dutch were other foreign powers who had landed in this land of ours and they were trying to capture markets so that they could sell their goods in our country. They also looked for raw materials which they could take to their own countries. These European powers slowly found entry by establishing various trading companies. The East India Company is one such a company and then they set up their warehouses or factories or what we call as godowns where they would store their goods. These goods would later be sold in Indian markets. Now, Indians called these foreign powers as topkars because of their characteristic headgears. If you look at this picture, you will see that all these Europeans are wearing some very distinct headgear and therefore Indians call them as topkars. Children, look at this picture carefully. What does it represent? Well, you are absolutely right. This is an Indian village. So even Maharashtra was full of such kind of villages in the 17th century common era. Such villages were called as Mauja. Remember the word? Villages were called as Mauja. A village which was small was called as a Mauja, but a slightly bigger village was called as a Kasba. So you have another picture of a village here, very beautiful, very clean, very neat, and yes, very green with a lot of trees. You also see a man with a bullock or a cow, and he has got a plow. Right, you are. He is a farmer. Farming was the chief occupation of people in the 17th century in Maharashtra and also in other parts of India. Now, every village children had a headman, just as you have a monitor in class. So, similarly, there was a headman, and this headman had to bring maximum land under cultivation. So this was his first job to bring the land under cultivation. The village headman also resolved disputes in the village. So whenever there were fights, people would go to the patil or to the headman and he would help them to bring peace. A peaceful village is somewhere where everybody would like to live. The patil was helped in his work by a kulkarni. The Kulkarni kept a record of the revenue that was collected. Just as we pay taxes today, people in those days also had to pay taxes, sometimes in the form of cash and sometimes in the form of grain. So all the revenue that was collected, the records of the revenue were maintained by the Kulkarni. Look at this picture. You see, the top left picture is that of a goldsmith. A goldsmith makes gold ornaments. You have another picture here 
of a man and a woman making pots. You are right. That's a potter. And you have a third picture here of a man with a tool in his hand. He is a village blacksmith. The blacksmith usually made things or tools out of iron. So every village had these artisans. These people are called as artisans. And they had hereditary rights. So the son of a blacksmith would learn from his father and later he would become the village blacksmith. Or the potter's son would learn from his father and further he would make pots. Peasants or farmers who grew crops, they would give their agricultural produce, some part of it, to these artisans because the artisans also help them. For example, a farmer would need pots to store water or a farmer would need pots to store his grain. So he would go to the potter and tell him, give me a pot and in return I will give you some grain. This agricultural produce given to the artisans for their work was called as baluta. So here you have a picture of a village and we have already seen that a village was called as a mauja. A village little bigger than a mauja was called as a kasba. Kasba is like today's towns and this kasba was usually the headquarters of the pargana. A pargana was something like a district. Just as we have the district of Palghar where we live. Similarly, there were many such Parganas. Indapur Pargana, Vai Pargana. And all these Parganas had one town or one Kasba which was the headquarters of the, that Pargana. Here are some more pictures of artisans. Let's see if you recognize them. The one on the top left, you see a lot of cotton and you see a man with a loom. Right. That's the picture of a weaver. And the other two pictures, you see a wheel being used and the men there are making something. Right, they are potters. Now, though agriculture was the main occupation, the village also had many such skilled artisans. These artisans were found both in the mauja as well as in the kasba. Now, certain kasbas had markets which were called as pates. A pate is a market. The shete and the mahajan, they were the vatandars of the pate. So, their job was to set up the pate. For this, they would receive some land from the government. They had to also look after that market, maintain that market. They were also supported by the villagers in setting up the marketplace. The Mahajan used to maintain records of the accounts of the pet. Just as the Kulkarni maintained the records of the land revenue, the Mahajan maintained the accounts of the pet. Look carefully and you will see that the woman in the picture on the left is selling some fruit. Whereas on the right you have the man selling pots. So grain and other articles of daily use were all sold at the pet or what we call as the market. Children, do you know that even the rulers took great interest in ensuring that appropriate markets were set up in the places to serve the people? Veer Mata Jijabai, the mother of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, had established a pet in Pashan near Pune and in her honor it was called as Jijapur. Malpura, Khelpura, Paraspura and Vithapura were some more pets which were established in Aurangabad. Malpura in honor of Maloji, Khelpura in honor of Kheloji, Paraspura in honor of Parsoji and Vithapura was named after Vithuji. Similarly, in Khed there was a pet called as Shivapur and you guessed it right. That was to honor Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Children, we have just seen that in ancient India or in medieval India, art was a very important factor. It was an important aspect of our Indian society. These are some examples of modern Indian art. We have artisans even today and we should be proud that in our country, we have many such artisans. This is Bidri work which is done on metal. 
you find it in Bidar, a part in Karnatak. Kashmiri wood carving, beautiful, isn't it? And this is some barley painting from our very own Palghar district. Simple form, simple triangle, circles, lines are used for barley painting. You can also try to make some barley painting on your own. And if you want to see more such works of Indian art, you can always visit this site www.museumsofindia.org Children, let us just revise whatever we learned. We learned that Maharashtra in the medieval times in the 17th century, common era was ruled by Adil Shah of Bijapur, Nizam Shah of Abandagar, Mughals, Siddhis, European powers such as the British, the French, the Portuguese and the Dutch. And what were all these European powers called as? You are right, they were called as Topkars. Then we also saw that Mauja was a small village, a Kasba was a slightly bigger village and the Kasba was the headquarters of the Pargana. Children, we also saw that all these places, agriculture was the main occupation. Do you remember that farmers work so hard on their field and they supply us with food grains. We must always respect our food and always respect the farmer because of whom we get our food. Further, we saw that the village had a headman. He was called the Patil and he brought the land into cultivation and helped to settle disputes. We saw that the Kulkarni helped the Patil to keep record of the revenue collected. Then we saw that the artisans fulfilled the needs of the village. The artisans were people like potter, goldsmith, weaver, blacksmith. The farmers used to give some food grains, agricultural produce to the artisans because the artisans also gave them service. This agricultural produce was called as baluta. Pate was a marketplace and the people who looked after the pate, the vatandars of the pate were the shete and the mahajan. We will now have a quick Recapitulation, a quick revision of what we just learned. Try to answer these questions. A small village was called a... Yes, I heard you say that. Mauja. The chief of the village was called as... Come on, very easy, very easy. Yes, Patil. The headquarters of the Parganas was called as... Come on, remember those three words? You are right, it was called as Kasba. The Vatandars of the marketplace or the pate, there were two of them. You remember? Correct, you are very smart. Shete and Mahajan. The accounts were maintained by, yes, the Kulkarni. And you have something to think about. You can compare the village setup of 17th century Maharashtra with the setup of today. So you can compare what Maharashtra was during the 17th century and you can compare that with the villages today. So thus we have learned our part of our topic that is Maharashtra before the times of Shivaji Maharaj. Children, remember that even today India is a land of a lot of villages and these villages have plenty of farmers. So whenever you eat your food, before you start your food, when you thank God for the food, also think of that farmer because of whom the food has landed on your plate. Goodbye and stay safe.